Deception by Evil Spirits The way we think of spiritual attacks is often exaggerated due to movies, television, and popular culture. These mediums have portrayed spiritual attacks in a specific manner. However, the reality of spiritual attacks is quite different from the popular perception. It would be wrong to assume that all spiritual attacks manifest as full-on demon custody, as they usually do not. More often, spiritual attacks take much subtler forms that go unnoticed. Deception, rather than aggression, is the primary weapon of the devil. The enemy aims to deceive and hide, rather than confront directly. He'll never come out in the open, because he wants you to unknowingly give him full access. If he were to show you his full self and intentions, then we would all be quick to call on God and rebuke the devil. However, if he comes as a wolf in sheep's clothes, if he comes in the form of deceptions and lies, if he comes under the guise of regular life changes, then not only won't you suspect him, but you will be unable to fight or guard against him. You cannot fight something you don't know is there. Individuals chosen by God are often targets of deception by evil spirits. It's crucial to remain vigilant and prayerful, as the enemy seeks to lead them astray. Number 2. Spiritual Attacks Those with a strong calling may experience intense spiritual battles, including doubt, fear, and temptation. Staying grounded in faith and seeking support from a faith community is essential. Number 3. Pride and Isolation Feeling chosen can lead to pride and a sense of isolation. It's important to stay humble and connected with others to avoid these pitfalls. By maintaining a close relationship with God and continually seeking His guidance, those who were chosen can navigate these dangers and fulfill their divine purpose. The Appeal of Evil Evil often presents itself in appealing forms, captivating the minds and hearts of many. This chapter examines the allure of evil through the popularity of paranormal and occult entertainment, the spiritual dangers of engaging with such media, and the contrasting impacts of different entertainment choices on one's faith and spiritual life. In recent years, there has been a noticeable rise in the popularity of paranormal and occult entertainment. Platforms like TikTok have seen the emergence of subcultures such as Witch Talk, where users share content related to witchcraft and other occult practices. Additionally, supernatural media, including horror films, occult-themed books and TV shows, has garnered a significant following. This fascination with the paranormal and the occult is not just harmless curiosity. It can have serious spiritual implications. Engaging with media that glorifies evil or the occult can open gateways to unclean spirits. When we consume content that celebrates darkness, we invite demonic influences into our lives. Watching horror movies, playing certain video games or participating in occult practices can create spiritual vulnerabilities. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 4 through 5 the weapons of our warfare are not physical, weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying sophisticated arguments, and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. This verse highlights the spiritual battles we face and the need to guard ourselves against influences that can lead us away from God. To illustrate the impact of entertainment choices on one's spiritual life, consider the lives of two gentlemen, Frank and Steve. Frank immerses himself in Christian content, such as Bible studies, worship music, and church activities. 
He seeks to fill his mind and heart with things that draw him closer to God. On the other hand, Steve indulges in secular and occult entertainment. He enjoys horror films, occult-themed books, and follows related content on social media. Frank's consistent engagement with Christian content strengthens his faith and spiritual resilience. By focusing on God's Word and surrounding himself with positive influences, Frank fosters a closer relationship with God. Psalm chapter 1 verses 1 through 2 Blessed, fortunate, prosperous and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers, ridiculers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, his precepts and teachings, he habitually meditates day and night. Steve, however, experiences a different outcome. His choice to consume secular and occult media creates spiritual openings that weaken his faith. These choices expose him to negative influences and distance him from God. As a result, Steve's spiritual life suffers, and he becomes more vulnerable to the attractiveness of evil. Entertainment Choices The entertainment choices we make have significant consequences on our spiritual well-being. Consuming demonic and ungodly content can lead to spiritual decline. It can desensitize individuals to evil, normalize sinful behavior, and invite demonic influences into their lives. This can disrupt their peace and spiritual well-being. Galatians chapter 6 verses 7 through 8 Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. He will not allow himself to be ridiculed nor treated with contempt nor allow his precepts to be scornfully set aside. For whatever a man sows, this and this only is what he will reap. For the one who sows to his flesh, his sinful capacity, his worldliness, his disgraceful impulses, will reap from the flesh ruin and destruction. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. When we choose to consume content that glorifies evil, we sow seeds of destruction in our lives. On the other hand, when we fill our minds and hearts with godly content, we reap spiritual growth and eternal life. We are engaged in a spiritual battle, and the content we consume plays a crucial role in this fight. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 to keep Satan from taking advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. By being mindful of what we watch, read, and listen to, we can protect ourselves from the devil's schemes and stand firm in our faith. Choosing to engage with godly content is a powerful way to strengthen our faith and protect our spiritual well-being. By focusing on content that aligns with these virtues, we can cultivate a mind and heart that are in tune with God's will. The appeal of evil manifests through the popularity of paranormal and occult entertainment, which can open spiritual gateways to unclean spirits. Frank, who engages in Christian content, experiences spiritual growth, while Steve, who consumes secular and occult media, faces spiritual decline. Consuming demonic and ungodly content can have serious consequences, leading to desensitization to evil and inviting negative spiritual influences. As believers, we must be vigilant about the content we consume and its impact on our spiritual lives. By choosing to engage with godly content and avoiding media that glorifies evil, we can protect ourselves from spiritual harm and strengthen our relationship with God. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed 
and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes, so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in His plan and purpose for you. By renewing our minds and focusing on godly values, we can resist the appeal of evil and live lives that honor God. Recognizing Demonic Activity In our spiritual journey, it is crucial to be aware of the signs of demonic activity to protect ourselves and others from its harmful influences. Demonic activity can manifest in various ways, often subtle and deceptive. This chapter explores the signs of demonic influence, the subtleties of demonic possession, and the importance of discernment through knowledge of God's Word. One of the signs of demonic influence is the presence of supernatural abilities concerning the future. In Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 10 through 12, we read about a slave girl possessed by a spirit of divination, which enabled her to predict the future. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire as a sacrifice, one who uses divination and fortune-telling, one who practices witchcraft, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who casts a charm or spell or a medium or spiritist, or a necromancer, who seeks the dead. For everyone who does these things is utterly repulsive to the Lord. And because of these detestable practices, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. This account highlights that not all supernatural abilities come from God. Some may be manifestations of demonic influence, intended to deceive and lead people astray. This account highlights that not all supernatural abilities come from God. Some may be manifestations of demonic influence, intended to deceive and lead people astray. Another sign of demonic influence is volatile and uncontrollable behavior. In Matthew chapter 8 verses 28 through 29, we encounter a man possessed by an impure spirit, who exhibited violent and uncontrollable actions. When he arrived at the other side in the country of the Gadarenes, two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs met him. They were so extremely fierce and violent that no one could pass by that way. And they screamed and shouted, What business do we have in common with each other, son of God? Have you come to torment us before the appointed time of judgment? This behavior is a clear indication of demonic possession, as the man was unable to control his actions and displayed superhuman strength. Demonic influences often claim to possess hidden spiritual knowledge or teachings. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 3 through 4 for the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth, but wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing. They will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another, chosen to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors they hold, and will turn their ears away from the truth and will wander off into myths and man-made fictions, and will accept the unacceptable. This verse emphasizes the danger of false teachings that claim to offer hidden spiritual insights, leading believers away from the true teachings of the Bible. Demonic Possession Subtleties False doctrines are a subtle form of demonic influence that can lead people astray from the truth. These false teachings create confusion and division within the church, making it difficult for believers to discern the true path. Galatians chapter 1 verses 6 through 7 I am astonished that you were so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different, even contrary gospel, which is really not another gospel. 
but there are obviously some people masquerading as teachers who are disturbing and confusing you with a misleading counterfeit teaching and want to distort the gospel of Christ, twisting it into something which it absolutely is not. Demonic influences often disguise themselves as benevolent or enlightening, making it crucial to discern their true nature. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 14-15, through 15, Paul explains, And no wonder, since Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light, so it is no great surprise if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness but their end will correspond with their deeds. These disguised influences can be difficult to identify without a deep understanding of God's Word and a close relationship with Him. Need for Discernment To recognize and counter demonic activity, we must test the spirits and be discerning. This requires a strong foundation in the Bible and a close relationship with God. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 Beloved, do not believe every spirit speaking through a self-proclaimed prophet. Instead, test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets and teachers have gone out into the world. By testing the spirits, we can discern their origin and identify whether they align with God's word or our attempts to deceive us. A strong foundation in God's Word is essential for discernment. Regular Bible study, prayer and fellowship with other believers help us grow in our understanding of God's truth. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 For the Word of God is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword penetrating as far as the division of the soul and spirit, the completeness of a person, and of both joints and marrow, the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. By immersing ourselves in God's Word, we can sharpen our discernment and be better equipped to recognize demonic activity. Prayer and reliance on the Holy Spirit are crucial in discerning demonic activity. Through prayer, we seek God's guidance and protection. The Holy Spirit helps us understand and apply God's Word, giving us the wisdom to identify and reject demonic influences. John chapter 16, verse 13 But when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all the truth, full and complete truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from the Father, the message regarding the Son. And he will disclose to you what is to come in the future. The Holy Spirit is our guide and helper, leading us into all truth and enabling us to discern the spirits. Recognizing demonic activity involves identifying signs such as supernatural abilities concerning the future, volatile behavior, and claims of hidden spiritual knowledge. Demonic possession can manifest subtly through false teachings and influences disguised as angels of light. Discernment and testing spirits through a strong foundation in God's Word are essential to identifying and countering these influences. As believers, we must remain vigilant and discerning, relying on God's Word and the Holy Spirit to guide us. By building a strong foundation in the Bible, engaging in regular prayer and testing the spirits, we can protect ourselves from demonic influences and help others do the same. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 11 In conclusion, be strong in the Lord, Draw your strength from Him, and be empowered through your union with Him, and in the power of His boundless might. Put on the full armor of God, for His precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier. 
so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. By putting on the full armor of God and standing firm in his truth, we can recognize and counter demonic activity, living lives that honor and glorify him. Knowledge in Spiritual Warfare In the Christian life, knowledge is a powerful tool especially in the realm of spiritual warfare. Ignorance can leave believers vulnerable to defeat, while understanding and wisdom can equip them to stand firm against the enemy. Here, we will be looking at the importance of knowledge in spiritual battles, the nature of the enemy, God's provision and protection, and the assurance of victory through Jesus Christ. How important is knowledge? The Bible reveals the importance of knowledge for spiritual survival. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, of my law, where I reveal my will. Because you, the priestly nation, have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being my priest. Since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. This verse highlights the critical need for understanding spiritual matters. Without knowledge, believers are vulnerable to deception and defeat in spiritual battles. The Christian life is marked by constant spiritual warfare. Recognizing this reality helps believers stay vigilant and prepared for the enemy's attacks. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 Be sober well-balanced and self-disciplined, be alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. Understanding that we are in a battle equips us to take the necessary steps to defend ourselves and advance God's kingdom. Who is the enemy? Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly, supernatural places. This verse describes the various levels of evil forces we contend with, emphasizing that our battle is not merely physical, but deeply spiritual. Daniel chapter 10 verses 12 through 13 also illustrates the existence of high-ranking evil powers opposing God's purposes. Then he said to me, Do not be afraid, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart on understanding this and on humbling yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia was standing in opposition to me for twenty-one days. Then behold, Michael, one of the chief of the celestial princes, came to help me, for I had been left there with the kings of Persia. Understanding the hierarchies within the kingdom of darkness is essential for recognizing the enemy's organized strategy. This awareness helps believers adopt a strategic approach to spiritual warfare, knowing that they face a well-structured adversary. God's Order and Protection God's angels play a crucial role in protecting and aiding believers. These divine warriors are sent to minister to us and engage in spiritual battles on our behalf. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 are not all the angels ministering spirits sent out by God to serve, accompany, protect those who will inherit salvation? Of course they are. Knowing the roles of angels provides assurance of God's protection and reinforces our confidence in His divine assistance. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit and have authority through Jesus Christ to combat demonic forces. This empowerment is vital for achieving spiritual victory. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 
but you will receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses to tell people about me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. Additionally, Jesus assured his followers of their authority in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Listen carefully. I have given you authority that you now possess to tread on serpents and scorpions, and the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy, Satan, and nothing will in any way harm you. This authority and empowerment enable us to stand against the enemy effectively. Fighting from Victory Understanding that Christ has already triumphed over evil through his death and resurrection gives us confidence in spiritual battles. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 When he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us, he made a public example of them, exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal procession, having triumphed over them through the cross. This victory assures us that we are fighting from a position of victory, not defeat. With knowledge of Christ's victory, believers can live boldly and freely, assured of their ultimate triumph over the forces of darkness. Romans chapter 8 verse 37 Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through Him who loved us so much that he died for us. This assurance allows believers to engage in spiritual warfare with confidence, knowing that they are already victorious in Christ. Knowledge in spiritual warfare is important for Christians. A lack of knowledge can lead to perishing, as Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 warns. Understanding the hierarchies in the kingdom of darkness and the roles of God's angels, along with the empowerment by the Holy Spirit, equips believers to stand firm against the enemy. Believers fight from a position of victory, assured by Christ's supremacy over evil, and can live with boldness and freedom. As we engage in spiritual warfare, let us remember the importance of knowledge and the assurance of victory we have in Christ. By building a strong foundation in God's Word, understanding the nature of our enemy, and relying on the Holy Spirit's empowerment, we can effectively fight the forces of darkness and live lives that glorify God. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 13 through 18 Therefore, put on the complete armor of God, so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. And having done everything that the crisis demands, to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, moral courage around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, an upright heart and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability, and the readiness produced by the good news. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition pray, with specific requests at all times on every occasion and in every season, in the Spirit. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all God's people. By arming ourselves with knowledge and the full armor of God, we can stand firm in spiritual warfare and experience the victory that Christ has already secured for us. Conclusion Spiritual Armor The Apostle Paul instructs us to put on the whole armor of God to stand firm against the enemy's schemes. As believers, 
we must remain vigilant in our spiritual walk. This involves continual prayer, seeking God's guidance, and staying grounded in His Word. By doing so, we can discern and counteract the enemy's tactics. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 With all prayer and petition pray, with specific requests at all times, on every occasion and in every season in the Spirit. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all God's people. In our spiritual battles, we have the assurance of victory through Jesus Christ. His triumph over evil through His death and resurrection guarantees our ultimate victory. By embracing this truth and equipping ourselves with the knowledge of God's Word, we can confidently engage in spiritual warfare and live lives that honor and glorify Him. Let us stand firm in the knowledge of Christ's victory, put on the full armor of God, and remain vigilant in our faith. The danger of comfort is especially pronounced in the Christian walk. When believers become too comfortable in their faith, they risk developing a lukewarm attitude. This lukewarm faith is characterized by a lack of passion and fervor for God, leading to spiritual stagnation. Revelation chapter 3, verse 16 So because you are lukewarm, spiritually useless, and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth, rejecting you with disgust. This passage from the book of Revelation is a warning for the church in Laodicea about being complacent and lacking spiritual passion. The phrase vomited out is strong and intentional, urging us to check our dedication. The message highlights the need for complete commitment, encouraging people to be either very passionate about their faith or not involved at all, rather than being lukewarm and ineffective. Such strong language is meant to provoke a reaction, shaking the reader out of spiritual indifference. The choice of being hot or cold leaves no room for indecision, prompting deep reflection on one's spiritual state. This passage serves as an important reminder that lukewarm faith is not just undesirable, but completely unacceptable. The Danger of Viewing Serving God as an Inconvenience Seeing serving God as an inconvenience can lead to a shallow and unfulfilled spiritual life. When believers view service as a burden rather than a joy, their faith suffers. Embracing service as a joyful duty strengthens one's faith and dedication to God's work. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 Let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap, if we do not give in. The danger of comfort is that it can make us lazy. This laziness can stop our personal growth, job success, and spiritual growth. Entertaining ungodly things and people In our journey of faith, we often face the challenge of dealing with ungodly influences. These influences can come from various sources, such as friendships, thoughts, and deeds that do not align with biblical principles. It is essential for us to recognize these influences and understand the distinction between witnessing to others and partaking in their ungodly behaviors. As Christians, we must be vigilant about the company we keep and the activities we engage in. Exposure to ungodly influences can occur through friendships, thoughts, and deeds. When we associate with people or participate in activities that contradict our faith, we risk compromising our relationship with God. The Bible provides clear guidance on this matter. The Bible warns us about the dangers of forming close relationships with unbelievers and engaging in sinful behaviors. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 
Do not be unequally bound together with unbelievers. Do not make mismatched alliances with them, inconsistent with your faith. For what partnership can righteousness have with lawlessness? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? This verse emphasizes the incompatibility between righteousness and wickedness, urging believers to be cautious about their associations. Blessed, fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, following their advice and example, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers, ridiculers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, his precepts and teachings, he habitually meditates day and night. These verses collectively stress the importance of avoiding ungodly influences, and instead, delighting in God's word. Jesus set the perfect example for interacting with sinners without adopting their behaviors. He maintained his purity while extending grace and truth to those around him. In Matthew chapter 9, verses 10 through 13, we see Jesus dining with tax collectors and sinners, yet he remained steadfast in his mission to call them to repentance. Jesus interacted with sinners to bring them closer to God, not to partake in their sins. In a world often divided by fear and misunderstanding, we are called to be sources of hope, shining light into the darkest corners of human existence. Our mission is to demonstrate that true faith goes beyond boundaries and builds bridges where there were once walls. By embracing this calling, we not only honor Jesus' teachings, but also create a community where every individual feels valued and loved, reflecting the inclusive nature of God's kingdom on earth. In this way, we advance Jesus' work of reconciliation and peace.